Hello and welcome to Dabbling in Journals and today I am going to make dashboards in my January coffee theme for my Camel Travellers Notebook which has my bullet journal in it and for my Brown Travellers Notebook which has my memory keeping journal in it. I haven't set this one up yet so I'll be doing that later in the week but I thought I'd make both dashboards together. So once I've shown you how I make these dashboards, and I don't know if they're going to work, let's see, I'll also do a plan with me. In this one, so I'm going to get them out of the way because I don't want to get glue on them. <laughs> so I have started by just cutting out two pieces of craft card in eight inches by four inches, which fits into my plastic dashboard. Okay. So I found in my stash this piece of rice paper and I've never used rice paper and I don't know quite what I'm doing but I thought it'd be fun to try. I also found this little napkin and it's this lovely coffee illustrations on the napkin. So let's start with this one because I think this one might be a bit more tricky <laughs> and I'm just going to start by ripping out some of the images that I want to use. Okay, so there's my first image and she can go up in the corner like that and then I want some of these coffee beans. So you could use any decoupage paper that you can get your hands on to do something like this and I'm trying to decide what might look nice. and then have my coffee beans and maybe my cafe frappe across the coffee beans and then I need something down here and I've got another piece of this same napkin this one that has some coffee beans on it too so let me think Ooh. has it got two feels like there's two pieces there yeah <laughs> just a piece of tissue and I'm thinking maybe I could do that piece like that that piece like that um that piece across there somewhere and then <laughs> some beans down here like so and i need something here don't i let me just cut this piece can go like there and then that piece isn't big enough is it or maybe it is okay let's try and see how we get on so moving all my bits out of the way so the first thing to do is to take some kind of adhesive I've got some Mod Podge matte here it's quite a liquid adhesive so I'm going to just cover my piece of craft paper with the adhesive you can get like proper decoupage glue but I don't think I have any because I don't often do decoupage in fact I don't know if I've ever done it there we go and then I'm just going to wipe the glue, excess glue off my mat. I put a mat down because I knew I was going to be messy. <laughs> and now I'm going to try and place my images. So I was going to have this piece, oops, at the top, like so. 
Then I was going to have... Piece here and a piece down here. <laughs> Is this going to work? And then I just want to put a little bit more glue because this piece is going to go over the top of those other pieces. Make sure that there's glue there and pop that piece on okay Oop. didn't have it right up to the edge there we go that's better and then I want to put this piece on let's get a bit more glue <laughs> oh, messy fun. Have I put it glue on the wrong side? I have, haven't I? There we go. Put it around the right way would be helpful. And I think I'll just have that like so. And then more glue. And I'm going to just glue straight over the top. And this glue will dry, it's matte medium, it will dry clear, even though it looks white when you're putting it on, it will dry clear, I hope. <laughs> and that's just to make sure that everything is, need a bit more. And that just makes sure everything is stuck down and protected so it lasts. And it's especially important to do this if you're not going to put it into a plastic dashboard. Okay, so I have covered that with glue. Take that little excess piece off. And what I do is I'm gonna put that to dry, to one side to dry, so that once it's dry, I can just trim around the edges where it's overlapping but it'll be easier to do that when it's dry so I'm going to put that to one side while I work on the next one okay so here's my second piece of card and with this one I thought I would use this napkin which is just a paper napkin so I'm just going to open it up Like so, and is it like got two pieces? Hmm, not sure. Okay. So I was just thinking just like this. It would just look nice like this, wouldn't it? And then cut off. And I've got different images on either side, and then I can add something here. So I am going to get some glue and spread it on. And I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the other side. And now I'm going to get in a right sticky mess, aren't I? <laughs> okay, it's going to stick to my mat. <laughs> let's, let's move some of that excess glue. shouldn't really be using baby wipes should I because they I don't know if they're recyclable I should use a wet cloth I will think about that for next time I'm doing some crafting and how near the bottom I want it quite near the bottom of this serviette so I'm just lining it up with the crease that's already there and then fold it over and rub it down Cool. 
and then what, sh what I'll do is when that's dry I will trim it and I will have a think about whether I want to put some little bits of decoration there I think that's going to look really cool now what I could do now is glue shall I just glue over the top as well um, yeah why not let's put a little bit of glue over the top let me get rid of all my rubbish right so now I'm just going to put a little bit more matte medium just to protect this because the tissue is so delicate so I'll just help to give it some protection I could have done with a bigger paintbrush I'm just using a really cheap paintbrush you know those that you get impacts for children because <laughs> I wouldn't want to use glue on a good quality paintbrush right so that side's all nice and glued and of course if I want to glue something else on it I can and I'm just going to turn it over and do the same on the other side I wonder if I should have dried the wet one side before <laughs> putting glue on the other side, probably. It's going to stick to wherever I put it now, isn't it? Oh well. We'll see. We'll see. So this matte medium by Mod Podge is really runny, which helps because you can spread it out more thinly, more easily and quickly. Got a bit of a crease there but I don't think that matters okay and now I think what I'm gonna do because that's quite wet I have these teeny tiny pegs that my granddaughters bought me so I'm gonna tie a little teeny tiny peg and I'm gonna hang it somewhere to dry where can I hang it So my dashboards are now dry. I'm going to set this one to one side and I'm going to use it in my setup of my Brown Traveller's notebook for memory journaling. And I will set that up later in the week and video it for you if you're interested. So I'll put that to one side. This is the one that I'm intending to use in my bullet journal. So let's have a look. I'm just going to trim around the edges. might leave that kind of like little rough edge at the bottom so let's move that out of the way and I think I am going to take this one out I really like this little envelope that was gifted to me in a happy mail so I'm going to pop that so I've still got it in here in the back of my bullet journal I'm just going to clip it and then when I start a new bullet journal I can simply move that and my Whoop. I'm just going to move my sticky notes there and going back to my dashboard this one I'm going to pop in this way so that I've still got that image that I love and I don't lose it and I'm going to pop my new one that I've just made in the other way and let's see how that looks Ooh. I really like that I think it looks rustic and the colours go really well with this envelope that I've got here I might add something here because where I put that piece of thin decoupage paper that had words on you can't see the words anymore because the coffee beans are showing through from the other side I still quite like how it looks to have a little sort of raggy piece there and she's such a lovely image so I'm happy with that for my January dashboard I do, I realised after I did my last video that I hadn't decorated the back of my monthly insert. So I'm just going to do that now. And what shall I use? I'm thinking I'll use one of these girl stickers. Let's see if we can find one that looks nice. I wonder if there's any of them drinking coffee. Oh, 
one looks nice. Oops. Um, oh, there's one drinking coffee. Should we have her? And I'm going to pop a little piece of paper on the back there. Now, what would be nice? I might take a little piece of this. It's right down the bottom, <laughs> of course. take a little piece of this Japanese paper because I think that goes with the Korean sticker is it a Korean sticker I'm not entirely sure and I just want to distress that around the edges there we go and I think first I'll put some washi tape so I've got this sort of fairly neutral one And I try to choose washi tapes that sort of the colours go with the look that I'm looking for. And I've chosen the Japanese paper because I think it goes with the sticker. Rightly or wrongly, I do not know. And this one, the colour matches quite nicely. So I'm going to pop a little bit of that there and then some that way. Just because I like to sort of go in opposite directions into the corners. So let me get a glue stick and stick my little piece of paper. And I'm also covering where I've got ink on here somehow or other. I'm just gonna stick that piece down. Maybe like that. And I think a stamp would look nice on there. So let me just get out my stamps. I wonder if I've got one which is a good color match. Ooh. That color looks like it goes with that paper, doesn't it? That's not a stamp, it's a ticket. And we've got that one. Okay. So I'm going to pop a little bus ticket. It's just little tiny bits of um, ephemera. Vintage looking bits. Like so. And then I'm going to pop my sticker. Do you think she needs anything underneath her to balance it out? I might use another piece of this Japanese paper. And I will stick that down first. Oops. Let's stick this piece down. And I want to see the rough torn edge, so I'm going to pop it that way. I have no idea whether I have the writing the right, right way round. <laughs> Probably not. There we go. I'm going to pop her there. So I've got my girl drinking my cup of coffee. So now I have my dashboard, which I really like with this envelope that I got from Sticky Club. My monthly I decorated in my last video, if you didn't see that. And I am just hand drawing in my monthly calendars and decorating them. And I'm really pleased with how they are looking. And it's one of those really slim short trip inserts that was gifted in a happy mail. And I'm really loving that. And now I just need to do this week's planning. So where were we? Now what I've decided, I was doing my planning so that I did my week of planning, then I did my meal planning, then I did my focus of the week. But I've decided to do the meal planning first simply because I need to do that slightly before the week begins so that I can get the groceries ordered and delivered or ready for the week's meals. So I've already written in all my meals and my sort of shopping list of ingredients so these are things that I would need in addition to what I buy every week, like bread and fruit and whatever. Okay, so I wanna decorate this page and I think I'll just use some of those leftover scraps that I have from my dashboard. So I really liked this little, if I can rip it out. Don't want to lose any of the images so that I can use them elsewhere, should I say wish. So I thought that was really nice. So if I just take the top edge off of that. Ooh. 
yeah so I'm going to stick that on I'm going to buy some more decoupage paper I enjoyed making those and uh, I think it kind of goes with my rustic style because it tears in such a lovely organic way so there that's a little bit of decoration at the top of my meal planning and I have got a meal plan sticker as well so I'm going to pop one of those on just a small one that's pretty obvious that that's my meal plan and then I'm going to take this little leftover piece and stick it in the corner so I'm going to glue that piece on just using a glue stick and that little piece I ripped off that can go up there can't it So I have planned out my week of meals, lots of things for me to cook. I've got tagliatelle with creamy walnut sauce on here again because I didn't actually do it last week because my PTSD was bad and I had a few days where I couldn't cook. So I've popped that on here again and then we've got carrot cumin and kidney bean burgers with some salad and fries. Then I'm trying a recipe called macaroni peas. <laughs> Sounds really nice that one. I'm looking forward to that. A peach and chickpea curry because we always have curry on a Thursday but I'm trying a vegetarian one. That one might even be vegan. I'm not sure. And then Friday courgette and mint fritters with poached egg and garlic mushrooms. Saturday a savoury grain casserole and Sunday I'm going to use some vegetarian chilli that I have in the freezer left over from when I last cooked. And I might change my mind about that and keep a little stock of things in the freezer. And for our sweet treat this week, we're going for bananas and vanilla custard. So I probably won't have that, but my boys like to have some sweet treats. My flapjacks went down well last week. So now I need to plan my week. And this colour. wonky as always which it shows particularly when you're using grid and now I'm going to put my tip in so let's I'm just using clear magic tape so that it doesn't cover the pattern of the paper because it's transparent she says getting in a pickle as always <laughs> oh dear. there we go let's try again there we go it's just a tiny little bit too long I've got my tip in there sorry I keep getting interrupted and then I'll lose my train of thought so I've put my tip in in I want to look for something to decorate this page oh, I had found this in my stash which has a coffee pot on it so I thought that would be nice to use and the colors look nice what else have I got oh and the colors of that look nice so I'm just going to use that as my to-do list, I think, which is fairly straightforward and simple. Let's put a little bit of this washi. Yeah, just like that, I think. And that can be my to-do list for the week. And then this one, I think I'm just going to use as decoration. So let's take this out. Ooh. This 
this was gifted to me so I haven't used one of these before and I have no idea where it came from I think it's a gift from snippets and scraps on YouTube oh look so they all come they it all comes it's perforated I'm trying to be careful and it all comes apart look that's pretty cool <laughs> so you could use it as a frame and then you've got other bits so you could have another frame well these are really cool I wonder where she got them from what do you think I quite like it like that though I'm losing I'm not going to see that bit am I should I do it like that I think also what I'll do is I'll stamp a coffee cup on there. So I've got some stamps here and this one is a coffee cup. Let's see how I go. Wish me luck. Let's put it down there. Get a little bit of ink. Okay. Hope I don't get hit my desk. Oh, cool. I did hit my desk a bit. Let's rip that off. I will clean that off in a minute. So now I'm going to glue on my little frame. Am I going to get the glue on that without getting it everywhere? Because it's quite thin. that that way I think and then my little coffee cup oh I really like how that looks okay so I'm all ready to plan my week now I did quite well last week in that I did everything on my to-do list apart from book a grocery delivery so I need to do that today. So let me write it down so I don't forget. So that's for next week. This is going to be my to buy list. And I think last week I wrote a to buy list, but I'm not sure that I actually bought any of the things. Oh, I did. I bought the collar for my puppy, but I need some photo paper and I also want a dog training book because I've run out of ideas for my elder dog she knows lots of tricks but she gets easily bored so I want to get her a new book with some new ideas for things for her to learn so that's that done and there may be other things that I need to buy this week that I'm not aware of yet. And then Monday, my mum is coming for coffee. And we're going to go for a walk. Tuesday, piano. Thursday, as always, is karate and dance. And dance. And I've got a vet appointment now what time is that on Wednesday for vaccinations I think this one's for kennel cough 10 30 want to get this video edited and uploaded tomorrow I had wonderful Happy Mail packages. They really cheered me up during a bad week last week. At the weekend, I unboxed them. I've done a video, so I need to edit that Happy Mail video. I'll try and do that on Wednesday. And then you can share my joy. It was lovely Happy Mail. So if I put that in for Wednesday, and then Friday, I'm going to do the setup of my brown traveller's notebook and I'll record that 
and then Saturday my sister's coming for coffee so that's all I have in for my week at the moment but that's plenty to be going on with I'm hoping actually on Thursday provided I don't have any friends coming around I'm hoping to do some drawing because I haven't done any drawing for a while and it would be really fun to do so so that's that page sorted and all I've got left to do now is my focus of the week now last week I was using the wild unknown tarot and I picked this card which I think I held upside down all through the video and I've done some journaling there on the notion of change because a butterfly sort of represents transformations I guess due to the transformations they go through in their life cycle and the guidebook suggested that we try and face change with the grace of a newly formed butterfly a world of possibilities balanced on your delicate wings <laughs> very poetic so I did think about change I don't have any big changes happening in my life that I'm aware of but of course things can suddenly just be dumped on you and things can change and it's not in your control and we all have to cope with change all the time so I did do some thinking about ways to cope with change and I was thinking about how important it is to acknowledge the change and also identify those bits that you can control and those that you can't control so you focus on the sort of consequences of the change that you can actually control and I think it's also a good idea to identify positive as well as negative consequences of the change. I don't know about you, but I have this just sort of automatic response, which is to focus on the negative consequences of any change that I have to cope with. And I think it's a good idea really to identify the positives and perhaps even write them down. The act of writing it down makes the idea more salient when you're thinking and you're more likely to focus more on the positives if you've written those down. I think we don't need any help focusing on negative consequences. <laughs> and I think when changes do happen, they can be overwhelming. So you need to make sure that you maintain balance. Don't just focus on that thing that's changing. Remember, you've got to look after yourself. Healthy food, exercise, do things you enjoy, do things that help you relax. And aim to see the humour in the situation, even if it is stressful, even if there are some negative consequences. Try hard to find something that you can laugh at because laughing really lifts your mood. Just actually laughing, <laughs> she says, because I've got a terrible habit of giggling during my videos. But I just think that helps me cheer up. And also, I think it's important when you're faced with change to be proactive as well as reactive. We tend to react to things automatically, but being proactive is figuring out what you need to do in advance of the time that you need to do it. So if you know a change is going to be happening in your life, make sure that you start planning for it, thinking what you need to do in response to it before it actually happens. And most important of all is always seek support from your family, if you don't have family that you're close to, friends, if you don't have friends you're close to, then there's so many support groups and helplines that you can phone people and don't try and always cope with things on your own. So those were my thoughts on the notion of change. But for this week, for my focus of the week, I've decided that much as I love the Wild Unknown Tarot, I don't think that the sort of colour scheme <laughs> Here I go again wanting things to match. I don't think the colour scheme goes really well with my coffee theme because all of the cards are black and white with these like little splashes of bright colours and I think I might prefer to use that in the summer months with all those bright colours and I want to sort of have a deck of cards to use for my focus of the week which goes with my colour scheme of coffee. <laughs> so I've pulled out this one which is the Magical Herb Oracle and it says enchanting secrets from the garden and if i open it up there's the little guidebook and here are our cards oh look that's got a cup oh that's tea i think these are the cards and look how beautiful the backs are i mean absolutely gorgeous image in my opinion <laughs> and i love the colors and the olivey greens and the cards themselves are all have this lovely coffee coloured background. So I've decided this week that I am going to use this deck of cards to see if it can prompt me to focus on something I might not have thought of otherwise. And it's not got very many cards in the deck. So 
I'm just going to shuffle them up and we'll see what we get. And then I can decorate my page to go with my card and have something to think about in as positive a way as I can during the course of this week. So the card that we have is Flow and it says, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. G-I-N-K-G-O. Right, so I want to just add some decoration that's going to look nice with this card. So I am going to start with a little piece of paper, as I often do. Shall I stick with my Japanese paper that I've been using today? Because that looks nice. Oh, and a little bit of the green, because we've got a green plant there. So let's start with that. Oh, I don't want the pink. <laughs> So let me just distress my paper and I will, as always, take a photograph of my card, which is why I need to get some more photo paper and stick it into my journal so that I can see it. I always put the card itself on my desk for the week to remind me to think about whatever it is that the card has inspired me to think about. So I have this, where is it? I have this little photo holder I think it is it's got a little live heart on it and it's really nice I think it was gifted to me by my partner's mum and I just pop my card in it and then I can have it stood up on my desk to remind me to think about it and look at it and so on so I'm going to just stick my little piece of paper I think I'm going to do the the green and um, the green first actually so I've just again picked out colors from my card And I want this one to be really simple because it's been a long video. So I just want a flower sticker and I can see one on my desk. Oh, that looks absolutely lovely, don't you think? These are stickers that were gifted to me by the lovely girl from Snippets and Scraps and she's cut them all by hand. So I'm going to pop that. And I think with that card, when I add it, that that is enough. So that is ready for my focus of the week. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my dashboard, decorate the back of my monthly calendar and do some planning for this week. So I did my, decorated my meal plan. I made a little tip in, decorated my planning page and I'm already here for my focus of the week. So thank you so much for watching me. I hope you will join me again later in the week to see the unboxing of all the lovely goodies I was sent and to see me setting up my memory keeping journal. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.